And a very good evening to you boys and girls. Welcome along to today's United Kingdom talk. You're watching a live transmission. If it is uh, indeed Friday, the 24th of May 2013, and it's just gone 10.30 in the morning. Very good morning to you. It's cold. It's, I've had to put the jumper back on again. It's very, very cold. Must say a quick hello to Terry, who's with us already. Terry, up to north. Good morning, Terry. Terry H. Let's have a look at you. What are you looking like these days? Oh, dear. Oh, dear, Terry. The years. I'm just having a little look at your Facebook pictures. Let's have a quick look here. Let me have... Oh, dear. The years are not being very kind to you, are they, lovey? Eh? The I, I can recommend some very good moisturisers. Not that I use any myself. In fact, I've just actually I've left it in the other room. Can you just give me a second? I've left something in the other room. I'm just going to go and get something because um, uh, I, I, this is this I discovered this yesterday. Just a second. Don't just stay there a moment, please. It is funny, really. All that, all that preparation. I always sort of seem to manage to leave something in another room or whatever. Yes. Um, talking of talking of remaining youthful, is that in? Oh, just a minute. Shall I just lower myself? Let me just lower myself a bit. My um, my phone number thing is in the way, isn't it? How do I get around that? I could just get rid of it altogether. No, I'll leave it there for now. Uh, those of you watching the live bit may notice a little bit of my head is uh, is missing. Due to a thing at the top telling you the Skype and phone number. Just in case there's a very rare opportunity of someone actually bothering to call in this morning. We only had one last week. Poor old fag Ash Leal. I mean, she can barely afford the phone calls, dear. Don't let her phone in again, please. She had to take out a small mortgage to ring me. It's outrageous. Anyway, I spotted this... Because, you know, I've got, I've got two, uh, a, a couple of problems in my own mind. My hair loss and my weight. There might be some, well, we know what we would, I mean, let's be honest. We know how to get rid of the weight. Okay. It's not hard. Eat less. And exercise, I was going to say I exercise quite a lot. Although the last three weeks I have kind of knocked down a little bit on the exercising. For whatever reason, you know, I've been quite busy doing other bits and pieces. Um, but the other thing is the hair loss. Now, short of wearing a wig. Or having one of those hair transplants, I think. Who is that footballer? Wayne Rooney. That Wayne Rooney has. You know, I, I, I don't really know... How ass you could do something about hair loss. Now, yesterday in a magazine, I've come across this little advert, okay? And it shows a picture of a bald bloke and a bloke with what looks like a haircut almost well, exactly the same as mine. Except it's not a haircut, boys and girls. Now, the advert, what's this place called? Finishing, finishing, you can have a look on the internet if you want. The finishingtouchclinic.com. Okay? The finishingtouchclinic.com. And it says, um, so, is this the right solution for you? Let us show you. Okay? So they're, they're, they're selling, selling, well, what looks like an answer to all our problems, lads. All of us who are losing our hair. And it's coming out in handfuls, to be honest. Every time I stand under that shower, which, to be honest, isn't very often. Okay? We don't like to use too much water. I am on a water meter. Okay? I don't like to overdo the shower too much. I really don't. Not only is there the, sh the use of the water, but heating it up as well. We don't like to turn on it. That's why I'm sitting here in a jumper this morning. I'm not turning the bloody heating on. Not in May. Are you having a laugh in May? Heating on in May? I don't think so. Anyway, 
It says, is this the right solution for you? Let us show you. Send us your, your picture and we will send you back a virtual mock-up of the new you. We know what it means to you. Now, be honest, you know, those of you that are uh, fortunate enough to be watching this program, I know some people just listen, but let me, let me paint a picture for those of you, those of you just listening. Basically, I, it looks, from the front, it looks like I have all my hair. But I only have to tilt my head a little bit down. And there you can see it, in the middle, bright as a Belisha bloody beacon, dear, a balding head. And it's going very slowly. It's going very, very slowly. I remember in my early 30s, I had already noticed that it was getting a bit thin in the middle. Well... It's all come out in the middle now. And it bothers me. As I say, a couple of things bother me. Hair loss and weight. The hair loss bothers me. Now, let me read a bit more. It's called scalp micropigmentation. It says, what can scalp micropigmentation do for you? Now, it says here, the technique has helped men to achieve a youthful appearance. And God knows we all need that. Especially you, Terry. Terry and Leeds. You need... <laughs> you need a more youthful appearance, Terry. You absolutely... I'm just looking at your photos again. Just a moment. Where are you, Terry? Terry, 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 Terry. Terry, Terry, Terry. Who's with us this morning. Let's have a quick look at... Oh, Terry. How old are you now? There's Terry there, there's Terry there, there's Terry, 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 right, hang on a minute, Terry, let's have a look. About. Have you got your, oh, you naughty boy, you haven't put your year of birth there, have you? You're hiding that from all of us, eh? Come on, what's your year of birth, Terry? You're, you're going to have to do something, dear. You're looking older than me, and that is saying something. Anyway, it says, the technique has helped many people achieve a youthful appearance, whatever the pattern or extent of their hair loss. Our treatment can create the appearance of a fuller, thicker head of hair. It can also recreate a natural, more youthful frontal hairline and side. Now, I don't actually have a problem at the front. I don't think I have a problem. Or really at the side. It's just that bit in the middle. I could be a monk. Not a chipmunk, no. A it's a religious order, a monk. They go around with um, long brown sort of all-in-one thing. Not a onesie, dear. I don't think monks wear what. No, they don't wear ones. That's for the chavs and the awful people. Only awful people wear onesies. They are awful. You might as well be walking around town in pyjamas if you're going to start wearing onesies, OK? Please, please, please do not wear what people are having but onesie parties where they all turn up in these awful onesies. Please, boys and girls, do not buy what and do not buy a onesie. Wear it and go to Waitrose. They won't let you in. They won't let you in Waitrose with a onesie on, you know, for God's sake, please put something decent on. Thank you. Anyway, back to this. Now it says, what is scalp micropigmentation? Here we go. Right. It's a method of applying a micropigment. Now, do it by that micropigment. I am I assuming some sort of ink or paint? It's got to be, isn't it? Some sort of ink or paint. It's a method of applying a micropigment dot into the dermal layer of skin on the scalp. So I think they must put it underneath, almost like, I suppose, some sort of tattoo or something like that. Would it be? Which replicates the hair follicles. The pigment dots appear as hair follicles and after the treatment has been completed, will give the appearance of a full head of recently shaved hair. Now, as you know, regular viewers of this show will know that Chris Reardon likes to keep his hair very short. OK? Um, at the hairdressers every three or four weeks. I'm generally there, and I show. Um, at the moment, I have a number half all over, number half. In fact, and I'm going to a new hairdresser's now in Wokingham, which is just down the road from me. And uh, apparently, next time I go, he wants one of his boys to do it because he's got, he's got the boys sweeping up. 
and he wants one of them to do it. He said, do you mind if one of the lads do it next time? And so I had a look over and I thought, yes, that lad's quite nice. I don't mind him cutting my hair. And it'll only cost a fiver because he's learning. How wonderful is that? Cling! More money saved. I love it. Back to the story. It says, we can match any client's... Com I hate that word, client. Is it a more, more of a sort of American word? Is it client? Do you think? I like the word customer. I want to be a customer, not a client. I sound like I'm going to a prostitute if it's a client. Do you know what I mean? Prostitutes call their customers clients i do feel a bit like i uh, know i'm not i know i couldn't be a prostitute at my age I, i'm fully aware of that thank you you don't need to point that out to me okay i would rather be called a customer but anyway it says we can match any client's complexion from pale to dark skin tones i have dark skin tones possibly um uh, not as dark as it would be if it was a bit more blooming off this summer Christ, it's cold out there today. But you wait till I get a bit of sun on my face. I go black very quickly. If I think I, w I was black in my last life. And I've kept that skin pigmentation in my skin. How fantastic is that? Eh? Black people are very, very lucky. They don't look anywhere near their age. They don't. They absolutely don't. It's only us whiteies, us pieces of white trash that look old and haggard, isn't it? It is. Um, power to dark skin tones, red hair, blonde hair, greying or white hair. Well, I haven't got any white hair. I'm pleased to announce that. But it is thinning in the middle. Look, it's going. I can have this. How long will the treatment take? It says, it depends on the extent of your hair loss. Treatment is based over three sessions, each lasting from one to four hours. Four hours? Well, I don't know if I could sit still for that long. I can't even sit, sit still here for more than ten seconds at a time. I'm always bobbing around in the chair all over the place. It says, correctly applied, the treatment is indistinguishable... That's a l I'm very proud of myself for saying that word without tripping up. Usually when I'm doing my quiz nights at the Mayflower in Rotherhive on Tuesday nights at 8.30, if you ever want to join us there, if there's like a long word or a foreign word, I often trip up on it, and I have to actually ask the people playing the quiz how to say the word. So I'm quite proud of saying it. Can I have a little round of applause, please? Indistinguishable. Thank you. Correctly applied, this treatment is indistinguishable. Indistin sorry, I can't do it twice. <laughs> indistinguishable from real hair follicles. You will not be able to tell where your real hair ends and the pigmentation begins. It says, what is the next step? First, we ask you to come to our clinic for a free consultation. We can discuss your specific requirements. There's no time limit. And in a relaxed and friendly meeting, we can address any details or questions you may have. Well, the question is, how much is it going to bloody cost here? That's the question. I mean, if we're looking at a thousand pounds, I... Oh, no, the thought of spending all that in one go fills me with horror. Mind you, you do the same when you go down Starbucks, don't you? God, £2.20 for a bit of bloody cake? Are you taking a piss or what? £2.20 for a bit of cake? In, that's what it is in Starbucks. You can buy a whole cake in the supermarket for a pound. A whole angel cake. I do like angel cake. The pink, the yellow and the white. One pound for a whole one. Starbucks, £2.20 for the tiniest piece, about a centimetre wide. Shocking. Anyway, we will give you a free personalised quote for your treatment, which will include free session. Not free as in F R W E, three as in T H R W E. The treatment is the new style solution for men who are suffering from male pattern baldness, thinning hair, alopecia. I've got another, you see, another word right there. Alopecia and any kind of hair loss. Visit us today. And this place, if you want to have a little of this, look at this online, it's called uh, www.thefinishingtouchclinic.com. And I haven't looked this up yet. But judging, you see, the trouble is. 
people put pictures of things um on magazines and on the internet they're very easy to photoshop although i must admit i it's something i'm not very good at doing pictures and things on the internet I'm, I, I can talk do you know what i mean i can talk but i can't sort of um uh do artistic things i can't draw i'm really rubbish at actually drawing anything no good at doing it at all um so someone I mean, it could have been photoshopped or it could actually be the pigmentation because if if it really does look as good as the pictures i've got to say i'm interested i'm interested in that if you've got any thoughts on that please boys and girls you can join in with this show if you are watching live check the date first of all check the date is it friday may the 24th 2013 is it coming up to 10 to 11 in the morning if it is and you're watching this show then you are with us live and you can join in live Two ways, three ways to join in the show. First of all, by email. So if you're, whether you're watching the recording or whether you're watching us live, you can join in by email this morning. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. You can join in by Skype. If you have Skype, which is fantastic, my Skype username is Chris Reardon. That's all one word, okay? C H R. I S R E A R D O N. Skype username Chris Reardon. Just click your uh, add a contact uh, thing there, and um, I'll add you or someone. Yeah, Terry's Terry's just uh, already added there. Good morning, Terry. Or you can join in by phone number. Okay. If you're in the UK, I have a local London number for you to call. It's O two O eight one double three. Six three five eight. Now those last two methods, Skype and the phone number, are only for those of you with us live on this Friday morning. Okay. Once again, the live Skype number is Chris Reardon. All one word: C H R I S R E A R D O N. Or the phone number is O two O eight one double three six three five eight. O two O eight one double three six three five eight. If you're watching a recording of the show. Then you can join in by email. Send your email at any time and it'll come up in the next show, okay? Email address chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. So I want to know, what do you think of this, this hair, hair loss thing that I've found where they actually put a little bit of pigment under your skin? It's not, it's not a hair transplant, okay? It's not a hair transplant at all. You can, you can have this little, dots put on your head and it looks like real hair um i want to know what you think of that do let us know okay chris at united kingdom talk .co .uk. good morning to my nephew jimmy butler who has joined in this morning good morning jimmy jimmy i'm wondering do you think old uncle chris okay jim jimmy's just joined us old uncle chris should have his is his you know the bald bit in my head jimmy that you always kindly kindly point out every time i come and visit you didn't you why do you do that why do you do that? Eh? Do you do it just to piss me off? I can say that to you now because you're over 16, so I can use the occasional word like that to you. Is it because you want to upset me, Jimmy? Because let me remind you, Christmas is just around the corner. Presumably you want a decent present this year. Then again, maybe you don't. Hmm. He says, finishing his tea. Up to you, Jimmy. Let me know. <laughs> Good luck to Jimmy, who has now left school. Oh, thank God for that. Oh, I used to get fed up at school, Jimmy. I hated it. I, I went to a very good school, um, but I wasn't a very academic person. You understand what I mean? I w I'm not very good at reading things from books and learning like that. I need to be shown something, you know, hands-on approach sort of thing hands on so where where you would get like a history book at school and they say okay read that and write about it tomorrow i found that very very difficult to do there must be more people like that in the world people who can do things if they're shown physically how to do them rather than reading them from a book 
Incidentally, my nephew Jimmy doesn't think it's a good idea to have that done to my head. Why not? I think it would be better. You can't tell, apparently, according to this advert. You can't tell, Jimmy. Don't you want your uncle to be young and good-looking again? Eh? Surely you do. Oh, please yourself. I don't know. Anyway, that's that story there. Uh, good morning to Fag Ashley was with us this morning. Good morning. Good morning to the viewer in Hove. In Sussex. Nice part of the world. It's posh down there. Fag Ashley was very posh. She only shops in Waitrose, don't you? Have you seen my Waitrose card, Fag Ashley? I'm a member of Waitrose now. I'm, I am a, uh, am I a, what do they call? I think I might be a partner. Am I a partner? Look at that. My Waitrose shopping card. Waitrose. And they've even put your name at the bottom. Mr. Reardon. Huh? How cool is that? You don't get those in Asda or Little Deer, do you? Fagash Leal says, What happens with the pigmentation when you get old and grey? Or all your hair falls out and you are just left with a few coloured dots on your head? Well, then I suppose you go back again and get the rest of it done, do you? <coughs> oh, I don't know now. You do make... That is a good point. Yes, good morning, Lil. <laughs> I don't really want to be walking around with various different colours on my head. Do I now, I suppose? It's, di it's difficult to know what to say, Marge. It really is. Very, very difficult to, to know what to say. A couple of messages coming in. Uh, Terry, apparently, was 30 in December. Were you really, Terry? 30? Oh, dear. I mean, God knows what you're going to look like when you're my age. I mean, I'm lucky, you know. I'm st you know, people still think of me as sort of 35 years old. They do. <laughs> Let's have a look here. Um, <laughs> okay, just a, just a few technical aspects. He says, uh, Chris, you need hair for the fibres to stick to something. No, you're not paying attention, are you, Terry? These are not fibres. It's, it's more, I think it's more like a tattoo thing. They actually, look, I've, I've read it out once, dear. are you not paying attention? I bet you're doing something else while you're sitting there listening and watching this show, aren't you? You can't do that, dear. I need your full attention, Terry. It says, it's a method of applying a micropigment dot into the dermal layer of skin on the scalp, which replicates hair follicles. There's nothing to, 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 to shake on your head or anything like that, Terry. Huh? I'm going to look into this. I'm going to have a word with my best mate, Ron. He will advise me. Because he knows that he's... I shouldn't really tell you this. He's had fillers in his face, my mate, Ron. You know the bit that goes from the nose down to the sides of the mouth, okay? He's had fillers in there. Not that I'm one to talk or spread malicious rumours or gossip about anyone. You know me. Tell me a secret and I'll take it to the grave. He has had fillers put in his face. He has. So why can't I have a few dots on my hair? My nephew, Jimmy, is not impressed by this at all, are you, Jimmy? Oh, well. Now, don't forget, anyone who wants to call in this morning, be nice to talk to you. Use the Skype. Skype username is all one word. Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Or the phone number, 020 6358 020 okay? All righty, let me just close a couple of things down there. Tell you what else has been going on. So I got back last night from work. <coughs> and, um... On the last kind of two roads to my house. So I come down a road and I kind of turn right. I got to the top of my road and there's a big sign, road closed. And there was all these flashing lights in front of me. And it's just like kind of after a mini roundabout type thing. So uh, uh, I, 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 I kind of went round the roundabout, slowed down and had a look over. Massive water main burst. I mean, it really was a hell of a lot of water. And where the underpass was, because there's a little underpass there, completely full of water. 
That must have been a big main spur. So I had to go right round the outside, down another road, and come back up the other end. And as I came up there, another water main burst down there. But on this one, there was no, um, there was no flashing lights or lorries or anything like that. So as I'm going up the road, and it was, seri- it was a serious water main burst. It was like a river coming down the road, and it was all this debris in the road. I thought, oh, God, I hope it's not sewers. Oh, with all floating bits. Oh, God. Blah. Oh, I saw that in Wokingham once. Oh, it was awful. It was right outside a restaurant, which, strangely enough, was empty. <laughs> it was, strangely enough, it was empty. Hang on a minute. Um, I, I, I came... What was I... Where was I doing? I was going to the swimming pool, and it had been raining big time. It had been raining big time. So, unusually, I'd taken the car... Because usually I cycle to the swimming pool, okay? And it, but this time I'd taken a car. Come out of the car park and I'm walking down the floor. Oh, dear, what is that smell? It was the most vile smell. And as I went down with the with a, with a kind of pathways and there's a few shops, there was all this what looked like rubbish on the pavement and men in, like, boiler suits working. Oh, it wasn't rubbish. I realised what it was as I got towards it and it was obvious what it was. The sewers had burst. And, oh, it was... It stank. <laughs> it was awful and absolutely stank. Oh, it must be awful. Can you just imagine being flooded? <clears throat> if you live somewhere where there's like floods or anything like that, perhaps you know people that have been flooded. And it's, you see, it's not just clean water. You get the sewage water as well. So you you you, you imagine your your house would be full of you know the same sort of stuff I talk. Do you know what I mean? Your house would be full of it. Oh, no. Dreadful. Anyway, so I'm coming up my main road, and it was... It, the water coming down, it was coming down fast. Must have been ever such a big main. And I thought, well, maybe they don't know at the other end. So I then... Uh, I carried on driving and drove back to the top of the road, um, where the part of the road was closed. And uh, I got out my car, and there was a policeman there, and he came straight over. Good evening, sir. And they, they put a, a tape round, you know, one of those tapes. Like if someone's been shot or murdered like that, there was a tape. I thought, oh, my God, what's that dub here? You know, he said, I said, he said, I said hello, mate. I said, um, I'll just come up to tell you. Do you know there's a water main burst down the other end? He said, oh, no, we don't know about that. He said, where's that? So I told him the name of my road. And I said, it just passed that a little bit further. He said, oh, it's probably blown that one down there as well. He said, one of the drain covers off. I said, well, it's not a drain cover because there's all debris in the road. Because th- those water mains, when they burst, that can be very... De- you'd, you'd be dead if you were standing on top of one of them. It erupts and breaks all the tarmac and everything above it. As it, as it pours out above, dear, like a fountain, like the Bellagio Fountain in Las Vegas. Have you ever seen that? Oh, it's nice. The Bellagio Fountain. I think it's Bellagio Fountain in Las Vegas. It's part of the Bellagio Hotel. And every half hour, I think, you get music played out of speakers and this fountain does all sorts of um, uh, wonderful things. I actually did a video of it. Um, which you can find if you go to the main United Kingdom Talk website, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, and look at the shows around October 2011. That's when I went to Las Vegas, September, October 2011, I think it was. Uh, you'll find there a couple of shows from Las Vegas, and one of them there contains that that fountain with all the music in it and it's wonderful so um you know i, I thought it, i thought where's Noah and his ark is that anywhere to be seen dear no i could see them coming down the road at me so that was my little little trip yesterday and it was all bad news yesterday because i was having my dinner in the afternoon I, I generally have a big lunch and i had um these new linda mccartney burgers and they're injected with mozzarella cheese now i'm trying to get off the cheese I would love to become vegan, okay? Because, as you know, I'm a vegetarian, don't like eating animals, think it's very cruel, um, certainly the way they're treated. Incidentally, there's a new film I've come across. Now, it is very graphical, okay? Don't worry, I'm not going to show it to you now. If you want to have a look at it, please write this. I'm going to give you a little, little title of it, okay?
It's earthlings.com. I'm just going to double check that for you, boys and girls. One second. <coughs> earthlings. Let me just check that. It's 11 o'clock, if you were just wondering what all that chiming was. Earth, that's it. Yeah, there we are. Earthlings.com. W -W, you could have a look at it as well now if you wanted to. But don't play the film. Don't leave me. I, c I can barely afford to lose viewers and listeners. Um, Earthlings.com. And it's about the whole way that people treat animals either for food, for clothes, for experimentation and all that. It's called speciesism. It's kind of like, um, you know, like racism is where some vile groups of people hate other groups of people. You, you know that bit, right? Speciesism is where humans hate other species. Okay. So that, that's what it's, it's kind of about speciesism and how all these animals are mistreated. If you want to have a look at that film, it's very good. I'm about, it's about an hour and a half long. It's a long one. Okay. It's a long one, but I think it's worth you watching. Earthlings.com. E-A-R-T-H-L-I-N-G-S. Earthlings.com. Watch that when you've got an hour and a half to spare, and it's a real eye-opener. OK, so anyway, I'd like to become vegan. Um, but anyway, but, uh, I'm getting there slowly. The milk's gone. I've got to knock the cheese on the head as well. But saying that, I've been trying these Linda McCartney um, uh, burgers with mozzarella cheese in them as well. And they are rather delicious. Uh, the trouble is when I'm doing stuff and, like I, I, I don't have much patience. I tend to cook everything too high. And I put the burgers on and then I'll go and do because I can't be wasting time, you know. So I put the burgers on, put the potatoes in the microwave and uh, started them off. And I come upstairs and I start doing things. And I look at the clock and I say, well, I'll give those five minutes. And I start doing things on the Internet. For example, I think I was preparing for this show today. And I forget. And it's not until the sort of smoke alarm in the kitchen goes off, I realise that there's still burgers under there. And they got a bit burnt, but they were OK. Some people, they say you're not supposed to eat burnt food, don't they? Because it causes cancer, changes the chemical transition of something or whatever, compounds. I don't know what, it, what it's all talking about. Um, so I got those and the vegetables, put them on the plate, bit of tomato sauce, and I'm sitting there eating it. So I finished my dinner and kind of on the very last bite, I thought to myself... <clears throat> it feels like it felt like I had a bit, a little bit of burnt burger stuck to the roof of my mouth at the back. Anyway, so I've put my finger in my mouth. And I was quite, I was trying to find this bit of burger. Ah, 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 ah. Uh, 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 um, you know, take my finger and look it, look it at the finger. No, there's no bit of burger there. So I tried again. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, uh. No, no bit of burger there. And uh, I tried a couple of times. I've just got someone on the uh, on the line. If you just hold there a second, I'll be with you in a second. Eventually, I got. I, I thought, well, I'll try and scratch it off with me now. Scratch it off. Still nothing there. And it it felt like there was something stuck to the back of my mouth. Anyway, eventually, I went to my mirror, and I've got a little dental mirror. You know those little dentist mirror. You get them from from Superdrug. They're only a couple of quid. And I looked in it, and blow me down. There's a bloody great blood blister on the back of the top of my roof mouth. You know the soft bit? So you put your finger in, uh, hard, eh, hard. As you get to the back, there's a really soft bit. I don't know what it's called. And there was a great big blood blister there. So I don't know how that happened. I must have scratched it with a bit of food going down. Anyway, for the whole day, it felt like there was something stuck to the roof of my mouth. But if, I say the whole day, for a couple of hours, it very quickly seemed to dissipate. And it was big, big red blood blister in my mouth. Anyone ever had one of those? Very nasty. Let's go to the phones. Who's calling in? Good morning. Have you got my chops, mate? Have I got your what? Have you got my chops? I know that voice. Chops. My steak. You're not having chops and steak. We're not eating dead animals on this programme, thank you very much. Oh, you ain't got my chops in. There's no chops. No. You know who this is? 
I know the voice. Keep going. Give me some clues. Give us a clue. Some clues. Yes. Um, is it you Jennifer on the Isle? Is it you? Is it you on the Isle of Wight? No. Jennifer Holiday. Jennifer Holiday. Yeah, involved you in tears. And I am telling you that one. That's the one. Oh, I know this voice. I haven't seen you for a while, have I? No, well, no you've never seen me. Haven't I? No, I've hid from you. You've hid from you me? you frightened me. Why would, I, why would you hide from me? Anyway, what I want to know is, <laughs> where's that gorgeous Ronnie? Ronnie's not here today, I'm afraid, no. Oh, he's... I've got the wrong show then. What show's he on? I beg your pardon. He <laughs> hasn't got a show. He makes brief appearances on this show. I'll give you another clue. Yeah. It involves lungs. <sighs> Lung troll? Yes, dear. How Hello! Are you? I didn't know you was the other way. I thought you was a straight lad. I am straight. I've been married 45 years. What? Are but you when th I see Ronnie, I thought to myself, I'm going to back to the other side. How bloody marvellous to hear you. And you. And you. I'm so pleased to hear you. And can I just remind you, because I, you know, there are people that stick in your head and you often drop into my head. I'm s absolutely serious. <laughs> I wonder what happened to Lung Troll. I'm so <laughs> pleased to hear from you. I, well, re I, I, I really ago, mean mate. that. I really mean that. And do you remember, if, if, if you, can you just share with us what, why you're called that? Do you mind? Lung troll, because uh, I've got lung disease, and uh, most of my time is spent off the net, so lung and troll. Yeah. All right, so he's got a bit of a lung problem. Um, <laughs> which you've had now for... Oh, it's 12, 13 years, isn't it? 13 years. Do yeah. you remember... Do you remember, I think you was about three years into it, and yeah. you, rung, you, you rung me, and we were doing a show on CMP Radio, and mm. I had my mate in Voodoo Mick, who does tarot cards. Oh, yeah. Do you remember that? And I you were worried. all about that, mate. You were, I haven't forgotten. You were very worried about it. You thought maybe you've got a couple of years left. Yeah. And he told you yeah. that you would be okay. Yes, I remember. I forgot all about that. How many years ago was that? Yeah. So he was she right, just weren't he? She in the room and she said, me, keep your voice down. He was right, weren't he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you're all right, are you? I'm not too bad. Um, You've been I've... looking a bit peaky lately. Peaky? I need... <laughs> That's because there's no bleeding sunshine, isn't it? <laughs> There's no sunshine at all. I have, you know I have, um, uh, of course, <coughs> since we last spoke, you can't smoke in pubs or anything like that now. So that that's good. But um, I nearly got COPD. I was, uh, uh, the last time I had, what, now what was the, is it a sputum test or something? What is it? What? Were you blow into something and the... Yes, I heard you the other week. What's it called? And if you're blowing 400, I was blowing that um, nine years ago. Let's have a look. Hang on a minute. No, no, no. There, there was a... Hang on, I haven't done this for a while. I'm just going to blow into this thing now. <sighs> 450. How much? <sighs> 500. Four fifty. Who did it? Four fifty. Right. He's going four fifty. Is that all right? No, it's not. Isn't it? No, that's not good, um, Chris. Oh, that's not good. We're going to start looking after your health, mate. Well, it's it's all right, isn't it? I do look after me health. Do you know what a normal person blows? No. A couple from the top. Of really? The scale. What six hundred? Is there only 600 on your scale? No, it goes up to 850. Yeah, well, there are a few, few um, just below that. I can't find my at the moment. Uh, well, it goes between 450 and 550 generally, and that's what it's been for the last few years. Uh, <coughs> yeah. Because, you know, I mean, um, it, 
I hate being personal, but you keep touching your nose, don't you? Oh, I've been doing that for years. Yeah. You know, it's breathing problems, mate. Is it? Yes. I do you notice... Know I mean? I've got the club fingers and toes. My toenails, they go right over and under and dig into my skin. Oh, that must hurt, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Do you have to keep it's them short or what? Jeanette can't do it now. You have to keep them short? she's old and wrinkled. You know? Awful. I, 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 had, I had this test at the doctor's where we blew in this other machine and it said yeah. I was just just over the line of not having COPD, which they put down to the years of working in smoky rooms. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, yeah. I would, I would have said that. Yeah. I do, you I'll know. tell you what. I do notice... <clears throat> I do notice when I'm singing... You know when you're singing a line? Yeah. A couple of lines. Sometimes I run out of breath... Before yeah. I get to the end of the line. Yeah. Well, I'll get out of breath when I sit a couple of steps up the stairs. Yeah, yeah. Get on my stairlift then. I swear, though, when I'm doing the swimming, because I've been a bit lazy with the swimming recently, just had quite a lot to do, do you know? Quite a lot of, in the garden. Yeah, you will keep that up, mate. Keep them lungs open. Yeah, yeah. When, when I'm doing that, things work a lot better. And that's absolutely true, that is. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, it's not... You know, I mean, I, I've got the lung disease, but it's all the rest that comes on with ageing and um, symptoms of the the illness that you've got that are on the peripheral. And I tell you, it's a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. Absolute nightmare. Yeah. How old you know are you I mean? now, Lung Troll? Hey. How old are you now? Me? Yeah. Oh, no, I'm too old. Over 60? A hundred and eight. <laughs> and the wife's a hundred and forty two. Because <laughs> she looks like it. Hundred and eight. That is old, my friend. She she just come out of the door and give me the finger. She's done That's what? That's how much she loves me. She <laughs> hates me, I tell you. <laughs> she really hates me. Do you find she yeah. keeps asking you about about um, about life insurance and that sort of thing? I'd be worried if they, she started doing that. I haven't got no life insurance. No, neither have I. I've got nothing. <laughs> um, that's my thing. I'm going to make David Cameron bury me <laughs> in the poor plot. <laughs> and then I'm coming back. And God help everybody when I come back. <laughs> <laughs> Just tell, tell us whereabouts whereabouts are you in the country again? I'm in Essex. Romford. Romford in Essex, yeah. I used, yeah. To, used to work there years ago at a place uh, in Romford. Um, Colours. It was opposite McDonald's. Opposite McDonald's? It's gone now. Oh, yeah, by the station. It was called Colours. Yeah. Yeah. Long, long time ago. Yeah, we used to have quite a few people um, end up in intensive care. Right. Coming out of that club. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, there was very naughty men down there then. Apart from apart from your your little problem there, do you do, you do what do you do with your spare time? My spare time, um, I have got an array of computers here right. and screens. Yeah. Um, I build them. Yeah. And then I give them away. <laughs> do I, you... I get bored with them you, at the you... moment. Just I've got an i5, big beastie one here. You got what, sorry? An i5 processor one, which um, has cost me about, um, I don't know, two and a half thousand. And then I've got another little one, which I use um, PC for the uh, um, Apple OS. Just play with it. You just and then, play of course, with... I look at you every you... week. Yeah. Without foul, there you are. Winking at me, <laughs> trying to get me to come over to your side. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, Chris. I sit here sometimes and I'm so bored. You know what I mean? I think about the rope. Really? And then I think, oh, I'll have a look, see what I can get on Chris's side. And, of course, you have me roaring here sometimes. <laughs> coughing and spluttering. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we we'll just, we'll just talk about we we'll just talk about life. That's all. 
Oh no, but you make me die. Ron, I, I, I must say, Ron is uh, Ronnie is can be very funny. He th he thinks I don't know if you saw the show last week when he was here. Yeah, I did. Um, but he thinks I should be talking about items in the news. I don't know, you know, sort of uh, that that Porsche soldier who was um, uh, yeah, murdered in uh, Woolwich this week and things like that. Um, news stories, perhaps the EU and all that business, but. That's not really what I'm about, you know. I, I do have opinions on that sort of thing, and sometimes I mm. bring them forward. But basically, it's, it's just an easy going, sit down with a few friends, having a cup of tea and having a chat. That's what this show is about, you know. Oh, you get riled sometimes, you can see it. I get You're riled, oh yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> don't know, like, I don't like being ripped off. I, yeah, I, especially, especially if Gladys um, snubs you in the um, coffee bar or something. Gladys. Oh, it's yeah, you go into one. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell um, one of them. I'll tell you what, though. I don't know how Ronnie Stan puts up with you. What do you mean? Well, he, he's, hey? well, he don't oh, live here, does he? He's got, holes in him all the time. He's got his own bloody house. Thank you very much. <laughs> I don't want him here. <laughs> I'm not with him, you know. He's got his own one. You, t you tell him, if any time that he wants to get away, he can come down here, stay with me and her. <laughs> can I send him to you? There we are. I've just made the phone number a little bit smaller on there, <laughs> so it's, it was covering me, Ed, weren't it? Um, yeah, he's got, he's got his own... Do you know, his, his other half is 15 years younger than him. It's shocking, isn't it? How do you get someone like that? I mean, I do, get, I do get chatted up sometimes by people, but they're always around my age. Who wants to go out with someone their own age? <laughs> I do. <laughs> I want a couple of Ballon Virgins. <laughs> <laughs> I look for someone who's about 32 to 38, somewhere around that figure. <laughs> oh, you're terrible. <laughs> I like to think so. Yes, you are. Listen, it's been wonderful talking to you again after so long. Please stay in contact. You're on the Facebook. No, I don't do any of that. Why not? <clears throat> no, 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 no. You'll all learn in a few years why you should have stopped doing it. Go on. No, no, no. Go on, what do you reckon then? Tell us. No, it's not what I reckon, it's what I know. All right, what do you know? I know lots of things. Come on, share it, spill the no, beans. No, you know what my thing was technology, wasn't it? You yeah. know what I mean? I used to be an engineer. Yeah. And I know where it's going. It's already started to happen. What, keeping an eye on us all, you mean? No, even worse than that. But still, you know, I keep telling all the young people, but they never listen to old farts like me. Well, tell us now, tell us. If well, I was you, I would <coughs> cancel all your Facebook, your Twitter and everything <coughs> and get away from it. And throw them damn mobiles away. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've, I've actually... i tracking me... <coughs> i tell you what ...on I've... my computer... I tell you what I've done on my um, on my phones. I've turned off all the answer phones. Uh, I'd throw them all away. Bloody marvellous! I've turned off my answer phones. No one can get me anymore unless I know their number when I see it ringing. I don't answer. I don't answer withheld numbers. I don't answer numbers that I don't recognise. Nothing. <laughs> I tell you, I don't get no junk mail. Nothing now. That's good. Because I've cut them all off. That's good. Tell you, all I've got is email. Why should we throw away our mobiles, though? Eh? Why oh, should... You, you, I tell you, you're going to regret it. <laughs> I, I should imagine I've made quite a few of these um, things in the past, and they've all come true, and I'd give it four and a half, five years. Yes. And you'll all learn the price you'll have to pay for having all this stuff. Well, tell us. Tell us now. Well, you want, what you want to do is scale the, um, the um, technology um, um, forums. Yes. And you'll find out yourself. What, what should you I... You have to put things together, what they're talking about. What should I be looking for? Eh? What should I be looking for? How are they going to control your life? <clears throat> okay. Controlling your life. Yep. I'll search for that.
we'll see what we come up with for the next show. Because you're not going to tell me, are you? No, I'm not. Perhaps I've if always you... had the old bill around here once with guns. I'll have a look. I'll have a look. They've already tried to kill me once, you know that, didn't have you? Have they? Oh, yes, the old bill. Oh, my God. They was round here, um, marched off my son, my daughter, my wife up the road, tried to entice me out of the top bedroom. I just kept few choice swear words telling them to get a go away. Oh. Oh, yeah. Dirty criminal here, mate. Oh, dear. Terrorist. They got me pegged as a terrorist. Well, I will have a look. Technology forums controlling <laughs> your life. Technology. You've done exactly what my younger brother does every time I get on the phone to him. What? Because I mention guns and that, he goes all funny. <laughs> who, do, do, who does, does he? Oh, I don't like guns. We don't like guns and things. Oh, they're lovely. No, 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 no. It's not no, guns, no. mate. It's people. Remember the song? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's the, the people, not the people. guns. It's people that kill people. Not the guns, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have a look, anyway, at, I'm gonna have a look around you, for Chris. this, then. I'm going to have a but look around at this. i medication. Technology controlling your life. Yeah. No, it's more than controlling your life. Have you been in a hospital recently? No. Oh. Because they're starting to put things in our bodies, you know. What things? Tracking things. Eh? Tracking? Control things. No, nothing in me. Oh, yes. They know how to control a her, her human body now. Oh. Oh, yes. You've seen the films, haven't you, where they walk around like zombies? I'm going to have to have a little look at this. I'll tell you. <clears throat> Terry, Terry who's up in Leeds, he says, what's mm. going on with this caller? He is scaring me. <laughs> Terry, I've been lazy, scared now. You've scared him. You know, I um, I keep saying to Jeanette, I'm going to turn up at one of his clubs one night and frighten the hell out of him. What, me? Yeah. Yeah, bring your air, your air thing and all that business. <laughs> oh, I, I'd never make it, mate. <laughs> yes, you would. Can't you bring one of those air canister things? <laughs> Isn't it? I don't have oxygen anymore. Oh, do you not? No, they took it away from me. I told you they've tried to kill me. Oh, Yes, I can't have oxygen now, but Jeanette has oxygen, so I'd nick hers. Oh. And if she, she gets lippy about it, I'll threaten to put a pillow over her head of <laughs> <laughs> So remember, it's 45 years I've been married. Oh, that's too long. It's too long. I know it's too long. But you must love each other, then. Oh, I hate her guts. No, you don't. You I don't. You would still be there. She's supposed to be caring for me. She what gets a load of old crap. You know, I keep telling the government, put them things in her to make her into a robot. Got a message here from Marge in Oklahoma who yeah. says, you listen to Art Bell too much, conspiracy theories. No, That's... no, it's not conspiracy. Oh, dear. Who is Art not... Bell? Do you know, I don't know Art I Bell. I don't know. It's none of that. You've got to you've got to watch what the technology is coming out. Yeah. The new technology that's coming out, and once you start combining it, you you understand what's going on. I'm going to have a look at that. <clears throat> yes. I you shall know, have it, a look at all that. Manner, it is I'm going to really have a look bad. at. I'm going to have a look at all that stuff you've mentioned and report back next Friday morning. You know, I mean, I've got a mobile phone. It's sitting on the bookshelf there. It yep. never gets turned on. Doesn't get There's turned £20 on. Pound on it. Well, we, we do know that as soon as you How turn... How do you get your money back without turning it on? Eh? How do you get your money back without turning it on? I don't know. Mobile. I don't know. You know, I won't turn it on. Because if you turn it on, people call you. Well, yeah. I don't want people calling me. Well, no one calls me unless I don't answer well, I no people. numbers anymore, I told you. You know, I went into Romford for the first time, for a long time, to get um, Jeanette um, Rod Stewart time LP oh, on this, yeah, CD. Yeah, yeah. And do you know what? I thought I was in a concentration camp. The people, they keep coming at you. Yeah. Getting in your face. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I yeah. don't like that because of the germs. Yeah, it's a bit like that That's insane. It. It's a bit like that in Sainsbury's up the road. I had to get my gun out at one point. Oh, my God. What, in Sainsbury's? No, 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 in Romford. <laughs> I had to get my gun out and tell them it all go away. 
Oh, no. <laughs> well, Mr. I'm sorry, I can't help it. I just go off on these tangents, these little That's stories. That's all right. That's all right. And it's nice to talk to you. Stay in yeah, touch. Yeah, you. Really nice. I'm glad you're well. Oh, and give my love to um, Blondie. Who, Ronnie? No, the the other one the other week. I keep forgetting his name. Blondie? What haven't I? Oh, uh, James. James, yeah, because, you know, when we was on the radio, I used to torment him. And That's right, him yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, I'll make sure he knows, mate. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Good all to my talk love, to you. Chris. Look after and yourself. You take real care of yourself. Tell her, mate. Tell her, mate. Bye-bye bye. now. Bye. bye. That, that's wonderful. That chap, um, <clears throat> lung troll, as I say, he's got a, a, a lung condition. It's a... Uh, what's, what's, it, what's it called when you have it for a long time? Oh, um... Const no, um, chronic, chronic lung condition, which means it, it goes on for a long time. And he's had that for years, and he's still with us, so I'm pleased about that. The last time I spoke to him must have been... <clears throat> 2005? 2004, 2005. And there are indeed people that get stuck in your head. That you haven't seen for a long time, you know? And now and again they drop into your head... And I'm so glad that he rung up there. It's all very worrying, that, though. Talking about the technology and that. Of course, with mobile phones and, indeed, the internet, every time you turn that phone on, it sends a little signal somewhere. And the mobile phone people know where you are. Maybe not to the closest inch, but close enough. I mean, on my mobile... I haven't got it up here, I don't think, my mobile phone. I've got an app called Find My Friends, right? And the friend in question, for example, Ronnie, he's, he's on it, has to agree to you doing this. So what you do is you send your friend a little link thing. He clicks yes. Once he's clicked yes, you can see where he is at any given time, by opening the map on the phone. I did it last night, because he was out somewhere last night. And I thought, I wonder if he's home yet. So I, I logged on to this Find Your Friends site, and up come up a little map and a little dot of where he was on the motorway, going home. So if I can do that... You think the, the mobile phone companies and anyone else who's involved with them can see where you are all the time. Now, me sitting here now, you of course know that I'm sitting at home. What you don't know is my address. I'm sure, I'm pretty sure there would be one or two people who are technology capable, shall we say, who could find out my address just from the fact that I'm sitting here talking to you now? By pushing a few buttons, checking a few logs, something like that. When you go out and drive, even when you go out and drive your car, um, not that everyone wants to know but when you when you go and drive your car number one if you've got your mobile phone with you okay that's tracking you wherever you're going not only that all these little cameras everywhere that the government constantly tell us are there for terrorists they're not really watching us as long as we're behaving and obeying the law we are invisible to these cameras driving along you keep within the speed limit as indeed i do now i've done all the fast stuff in my 20s and 30s and i i've slowed right down on about even on the motorways i only do 60 mile 55 60 mile an hour i stick to the speed limit and they tell us as long as you're going to the speed limit you are invisible to the cameras no you're not those cameras can see you whatever bloody speeds you're doing so we're always being watched all the time but why why do they want to watch us all the time? Why would they want to watch us all the time? What would be the purpose of that? 
Your thoughts on that, please, on the email, Chris at United Kingdom Talk dot co dot uk all right chris at uh, united kingdom talk dot co dot uk if you wonder sometimes my my little my little eyes dart to the side to each each side here that's because um as well as chatting to you while i'm doing the show i've got a couple of monitors uh, uh tv mo uh, little computer monitors either side and i keep an eye on any of the messages coming through as much as i can sometimes i miss them or i might not come straight to them if i'm in the middle of a long chat or something like that um and that's why i kind of glance to the left or to the right i've got, I actually got two monitors one on the left uh, and one on the right uh marge says art bell has a radio show, I've never heard of Art Bell, he has a radio show about paranormal and weird things in the world, conspiracy stuff, global warming, ghosts, anything odd. Um, and Marge says, why does a person think they are so important for someone to need to know where they are unless you're a president? Yes. Yeah, you do have a point there, Marge. Um, I have never been comfortable with... <laughs> It's ironic, really, because I'm sitting here talking to a microphone and a camera. OK, so this is ironic, but I don't like being watched everywhere. I don't like going into shops and having cameras looking at me everywhere. I don't like having cameras in the streets all over the place. It 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 makes me uncomfortable. It doesn't. Does it make me feel safe? Um, no, not really. That's the other thing, you know, like when you go down a tube station or on a train station or something like that. And there's no one on the platform. But they say you'll be OK because there's cameras. Well, the cameras may well pick up what's happened, but there's no one actually protecting you, is there? Well, we used to have people on the platform, you know, a station master and perhaps a, another man or woman doing tickets and things like that. These were physical presences at the train stations. They have been replaced in a lot of places by a camera. Oh, you'll be OK. There's a camera there. Even even in some places in London, you know, you go under an underpass, walk under an underpass in certain areas and there are cameras under there. Does it make you feel any safer? No, it doesn't. Not at all. Because they may well see you having your head kicked in somewhere for whatever reason or mugged, being mugged or something like that. I don't know if the Americans know what mugged is. Is that a word you're familiar with? It's when someone stops you and says, hand over your money and money and phone or whatever you know the camera may see that happening but that's no guarantee that the person's going to be caught cool. and besides you've already gone through the ordeal of that happening so how exactly does a camera make you safer i don't i don't feel any safer when there are cameras around and oh they're watching me again oh hey sure and that's the other thing with people watching the cameras what sort of people are watching these cameras? We often hear now, here in the UK, sadly, about perhaps schools, an example could be a school's sports day, where parents, aunties and uncles and friends want to take pictures of their children doing sports, running or, I don't know, throwing those spear things, what are they called? Oh, my word. <laughs> you know the long spears? They're not spears. The javelin. Javelin. Thro no, is it a javelin? Yeah, throwing the javelin thing or, or things like that or swimming, anything like that. Parents want to take, and they're not allowed to. Not allowed to. In case a pervert is out there, Taking pictures of children. Fair enough, I suppose. Fair enough. But I do wonder exactly how many perverts are out there taking pictures of children in schools when you can see damn well it's just parents that are allowed in. But if that's the case, 
why is it okay for someone who no one knows, none of the public know, you, for someone to sit in a little office in front of banks of telephone, television camera, uh, uh, television sets or computer monitors, but as it is now, with little joysticks zooming in and out on their cameras, which are all above streets and places like that. How do you know what sort of, I mean, at least if you're in a school event or something like that, you can see all the people physically there sitting there. I would like to think that you could possibly look at some, oh, you know, look at that one over there. He looks a bit of a pervert. Do you know what I mean? But actually, you probably couldn't. You probably couldn't. They don't all wear dark max glasses, you know, and thick glasses. They don't. But at least you would be able to see everyone there. When you're walking along the street, doing your shopping with, with little little John, who's who's five years old on your left, and a little Mary, who's three years old on your right, and you're walking along through the shops and all these cameras, how do you know what sort of people are watching them? How do you know they're not with their little joysticks zooming in and out of the children, having a good look at them? And to use a word that the youngsters use, to me... Uh, uh, when we're talking about this sort of thing, perving over them. That's a, that's a word that some of the youngsters use. You don't know. So why is that allowed? And yet, parents, aunties and uncles, friends, are not allowed to take cameras into schools to take pictures of uh, sports events or, or little, uh, what are those Christmas things? And nativity plays, shows they do at school. Isn't it the same thing? Your thoughts on that, please, uh, on the email, if possible, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, you've still got time to Skype in or phone in if you want to, boys and girls. Our Skype username is all one word, Chris Reardon. OK, all one word, Chris Reardon. And the phone number, 20 6358 OK, 20 <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> 020 8133 6358. Be lovely to hear from you uh, this morning. All right, some other uh, subjects for you today. The Eurovision Song Contest. Did you watch it? I loved it. I gotta say, I didn't, unfortunately, wasn't able to watch it live uh, because I was working on Saturday night. But it was, it was one of the best. Eurovision presentations I have ever seen. It was done so well by a Swedish television, SVT. And the host was, she was just totally out of this world. She was absolutely fantastic, the host of the Eurovision, which came from uh, Malmo uh, in Sweden this year. Anyone see it? Wonderful. There was so much humour in it. That's what I liked. And I particularly liked... Apart from all the songs, the bit that comes before the voting, when they're collecting all the votes in and that sort of thing, that bit that comes before the voting, and they did like almost a, a bit of a piss take out, out of lots of Swedish things, saying, we know that you like to put our flat pack furniture together from Ikea, which is something that I absolutely hate, to be honest. I hate flat pack furniture. I find it fairly easy. You know, indeed, my new, my new lovely chair here, my new fabric chair. I put this together myself. I've got to admit, it's not as comfortable as the other one, but I'm not buying another leather chair because it's cruel to animals to, to rip off their coats and things just so that we can have comfort in sitting on them. Um, I personally liked... I actually have... It arrived yesterday. My new Eurovision DVD, which I recommend. There's some really good songs on here this year. It was a particularly good... Oh, I haven't got my glasses up here. Oh, no... One minute. Oh, sure. Is there another pair? Oh, hang on. There's a little box here, is it? Nope. Empty. No glasses up here. <clears throat> um, some of the songs I liked. I really liked Estonia. I liked Ireland, which came last. Why didn't they like the Irish song? The song was good. The boy was bloody good looking. Ryan Dolan. And it came last. 
don't understand. Can't understand why they were so far down the list. Uh, the Israeli song was really good. I've all, I always like the Israeli songs. I, I like a uh, haunting music and, power and and ballads. I remember an Israeli song a few years ago called "Light a Candle" by Sarid. Harrod or something like that. Light a candle, light a candle with me. A thousand candles in the night will open your heart. You ever seen that? Look it up. And uh, so what we got? Ireland, Israel I liked, Estonia, Russia I thought was very good, Malta I liked, and Azerbaijan, quite like their one. And the winner wasn't bad, uh, Denmark with only teardrops. All good songs. Look them up on YouTube. You've only got to type in Eurovision 2013 on YouTube, and you should come up with all the songs on there. Bonnie Tyler did our song for the United Kingdom, I believe. Uh, a very, very mediocre song. Can I use the word lame? Not for her performance. The song was lame. She, Bonnie Tyler, great respect, love her stuff, completely the wrong person to do Eurovision. I've been listening to various radio shows uh, this week, and uh, they've been talking about Eurovision. Um, and one of the things that kept coming up was the people of the UK no longer vote for our song. It is chosen by people at the BBC. And they say, why can't we vote? Well, the reason, boys and girls, you can't vote is because you kept, kept picking losers. For that period of time when we were voting personally for our own songs, uh, personally, you know, the UK people were voting for the song to represent us at the Eurovision Song Contest, we kept choosing crap. What, do you remember that Daz sound? It was awful, awful. Gemini, awful. We chose all those, not the, not, not the professionals at the BBC. Okay. More recently, the BBC have chose a couple of good songs. Uh, the one by... Oh, gosh. The one with... Um... Who's the bloke who writes the musicals? Oh, Christ, what's his name? Not Andre Previn. Um... It's my time, it's my time, my moment. That one. Lord. Oh, someone tell me, Lord. He'd done Phantom of the Opera and all that. His name's gone right out my head now. Oh, gosh, I can't remember now. Um. No, I can't, can't remember the name of this bloke. Why can't I remember his name? Someone tell me. Someone come back and tell me. Anyway, that one was good. But we were choosing crap songs. They weren't getting anywhere. It has to also be said that the BBC have also been choosing crap songs. I actually thought the Engelbert Humberdink one last year, uh, the, that one last year, not, not the song that one, the one that chose... I'll, I'll try that again, shall I? I actually thought the Engelbert Humberdink song last year wasn't bad at all. But it didn't get anywhere. They hate us. Europe absolutely hates us. And that's how it is. I don't think we will have much chance in winning. I think we should still continue to take part. Um, but the people who were ringing up radio stations and screaming, you know, we want to choose the song. Fair enough. Fair enough. But bear in mind, we chose the song for a long time and we kept picking losers. All right. So don't say now that the BBC are choosing all the songs, they're all crap, because that's just not true. You were doing the same. We were doing the same. I actually don't think we can win at the moment. Um, I think um, uh, the politicians in Europe, they all hate, not the other Europeans, they don't hate us at all. You've only got to any, go to any other country and they, we, the, everyone gets on. Well, some of the places I work, Belushi's. Take the place I work at on Monday, Wednesday and uh, Sunday, Mondays and Wednesdays. Belushi's. OK, a very international crowd in there. They come from all over the world and we all love each other. There's no problem at all. No problem at all. 
Um, <clears throat> Terry says... Let's have a look. Terry says, Eurovision was good, but missed Jedward. Those boys are getting quite good looking, aren't they? Is it me? Or have you noticed that as well, Terry? The Jedward boys are getting quite looking. Carl in New Zealand. Good morning, Carl. Who says, I'm sure your government has a good process to ensure that the people monitoring city cameras are not using them for malicious activities, such as preying on children. Also consider when a real pedo snatches a child, I bet those cameras would come in handy then. Yes, I agree, Carl. I agree. I just don't like being watched by cameras all the time. Does it bother you, Carl, at all? Carl's in New Zealand. What is the... Are there many cameras up there in New Zealand, Carl? Do you have a lot of cameras? I know you've got a very beautiful country there. I don't think you've got any nuclear fuel or any of that there. New, New Zealand is a beautiful country. I haven't managed to get there yet. I've been to Australia four times. Uh, and I, I've been close to New Zealand. I've been to Norfolk Island. Have you ever been there, Carl? Beautiful place. Let's have a look. How old are you? Um, you're fairly young, aren't you? Might be a little bit... I don't know if Norfolk Island would be the place for you because it's, it's kind of... It's not an awful lot to do. Unless you like fishing and water sports. Norfolk Island in the South Pacific. Ever been there, Carl? Uh, Marge says... My mother actually believes our technology is being given to us by aliens to advance our process to other worlds. She said it started in the 60s. That's why we had advanced so fast in the last hundred years. It's a neat theory. Yes. I think Marge is going to call in in a second. I'm going to call you, Marge, soon as you want to talk. How long we got? Oh, we can keep going for a while, as long as the battery doesn't die on the camera. <laughs> Um, Carl says our main city centres, our main city centres have many cameras. So that's uh, uh, interesting. He's in Auckland. Oh, that's in the. Um, is that the capital, Auckland? So there we are. Let's see what else Carl says. By the way, Carl, how did you find out about the show this morning? How do you know? How do you, how did you know we were here? Carl is in. Uh, oh, he's from Christchurch. Yeah, I've heard of Christchurch. I do have a cousin in um, New Zealand somewhere. I can't remember exactly where he is, though, um, uh, to be honest. So thanks for that. Uh, thank you, Marge. I've got your link there. Let's go to Marge in Oklahoma. Good morning, Marge. Good morning. How are you? All right? How are you? I'm fine. Have you got my, um, uh, my video Good thing morning. still up? Because I'm echoing back a bit. Oh, no, I turned it off. Let, oh, me, yeah. let me make sure. Oh, hang on, it stopped. Hang on, it stopped. No, it hasn't. Okay, I, just, I closed the browser. Maybe that was something else open. Is yeah, it now stopped? I don't know. Yes, it stopped. Yes, it's it stopped. It's okay. Stopped. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to hear me go, oh, go, go, go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, Mark. Actually, now, you're in Oklahoma, <laughs> and you had the mother of all storms there this week. How far was it from you, then? Well, we had a small one come by my house, uh, probably five miles. Okay. Five miles, uh-huh. About, uh, about, that was the same storm uh, center, you know, the same that was passing through. Yeah. And as it went north, uh, east of me, it intensified, and that's when it dropped the big uh, F5 up at Moore. Right. So we got, a, we got a preview of a coming attraction here. <laughs> you, you, you know... Um like, what's your chances of of having a tornado over you? Is it like one in ten, one in a million? Like, where you, exactly where your camper is, okay? What would mm -hmm. be your chances of a tornado touching down and striking you? Well, I've been in Oklahoma since 1976, and there seems to be a little pocket here that they always sort of go around. I don't know. I always thought my mother said there's an Indian burial ground. I don't know. <laughs> you know I don't know. It, it, we have had them bubble up, you know, and kind of start forming. 
Yeah. And uh, they've been very close, but it, it's something. I think it's something to do with the terrain and you know the hillsides. It causes vacuum and pressure. Uh, yeah, you know, but I they am, come over yeah. the hills up there where more they they show like three different times. You know, it's come through that area. Yes, it's something to do with the the riverbeds and the mountains. Right. And I, I'm not a meteorologist sim- or weather yeah, person. S- similar to here, like um, yeah. the Thames Valley is like a valley where the river runs through. And that gets a lot of rain because it has to come over the mountains. And then the, yeah. as the clouds go up, they get heavy and then it just dumps its load on the other side. So it must be a similar thing to that to do with the terrain, I would guess, then, yeah. I don't know. I mean, of course, we've ha- I've had a, um, an in- well, where we used to live, there was a little camper that we stored our, our stuff in. Yeah. You know, yeah. and we were told that there was a storm coming that weekend. And my dad and mom said, let's move that camper, and we just didn't get around to it, you know. Right. And uh, we had the bad storm come through, and, of course, we went to the cellar and came out, and the camper was like like you had picked it up yes. and set yes. it upside down on the other side of the fence. There was a fence right beside it. It didn't touch the fence, so it had to have been picked up and sit down upside down. You see, this, the- this is, I, I, I don't think people realize that the localness of a wind like that, where it can pick something up, and yet something next to it is completely untouched. Oh, yeah. Of course, you know, people, they go berserk on this uh, religious stuff, which is okay, I mean. Uh, But they found a Bible, you know, open with the page of Isaiah talking about the wind, which was a wonderful thing, you know, was sitting in the middle of the house, you know. And uh, there's been, like, babies put down, you know, (laughs) set unharmed, not not a scratch on them, you know. But then next door, of course, everything is completely wiped away. It's just certain pockets, I think, in that space. Spot, you know that the air mm. just, just mm. didn't quite get there so but there's a lot of miracles you know that kind of comes with these storms but i don't know i just look at it you know I, the only thing that kind of ir- i don't say irritate i don't know you know things you like and things you don't like yes is they called nature monster storm killer tornado rage like it has all these emotions you know yeah. i said it's mother nature it's just nature Yes. It's actually quite beautiful if you could stay out of its way, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's just part of our earthly natural process, and they'll put like it's it's like it's uh, intentionally out to destroy someone. Yeah, and so yeah. of course some people go on. Oh, it's the wrath of God. We we end times, you yeah. know, and they run. <laughs> <laughs> you know, screaming. I said, no. I have to say, uh, <laughs> uh, when I visited, the times I visited Florida, uh, usually around the June period, they have some of the most amazing yet frightening lightning storms there. You mm-hmm. see this lightning in the sky, and it's, do you get the same then? It's, it's all in different places. Here, when we have lightning here, we might get one flash, and then there'd be a few minutes pass, and then there might be another flash. And a few minutes pass. In Florida, it's like... All different parts of the sky have got their little forks going off. All roughly at the same time. And it goes on and on. Completely different weather pattern over there to what it is here. Yeah, we had electrical storms. And I didn't realize a a lightning can go from cloud to ground. And ground to cloud. Yeah. the ground to the cloud and then of course it hits inside the cloud yeah you know and i'm more leery of electrical uh of, you know people say oh you live in oklahoma about the tornadoes i i rather have a tornado i can see than have to try to run from a bolt of light oh yeah you don't you know? don't know where the lightning's coming down <laughs> and let me tell you there are some videos on the internet and i've seen them where the lightning seems to come or it does come up from the ground it goes yeah. up and one comes down and they meet i'm sure i've yeah. seen that on there yeah it's something to do the, the uh, positive negative again yes. i'm not yes. a weather person so yeah. i don't know how exactly it works I, we I haven't wonder, really figured out what how tornado yeah. works i wonder That's if, why they, i wonder if by by using like a mobile phone would you call them cell phone i wonder if by using a cell phone you know, if you were using one in an, in an electrical storm, would it actually attract the lightning, I wonder? Mm, I don't know. Uh, and it's radio. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a message um, here from you. Uh, from I've this- always told that you don't go around cows 
if they're yeah. standing in a herd, they'll draw lightning. You know, I've right. seen, uh, actually, this was horrible. I went to town one day after a storm, and there was a cow melted into the fence. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, melted. He was, it was like, all you saw was his butt sticking out, and the rest of him was just, was melted oh, goo. Oh, that's awful. Yeah. I said, <laughs> I said, I guess he got, he was in the fence or it hit, it might have hit the fence yeah. and hit him, you know, I don't know. But they say that something to do with the heat and the cows, you know, yes. uh, they'll huddle together and draw lightning. And, yeah. you know, of course, you've got metal buildings and, and stuff. I don't know what really draws lightning. We've actually, uh, my mom's always told me that certain trees, popular trees or, or something will draw lightning. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't oh, have I don't any know. of those trees, hopefully. <laughs> no, it's strange. I've got a message from you here, Marge, um, from young uh, Carl in New Zealand, uh, who says, My thoughts and prayers go out to the people in Moor. I followed the horrific event as it unfolded through local and international uh, media. He says, uh, Living through er intense earthquakes we've had here recently, I can only imagine what they are experiencing. Of course, Carl, uh, here in the UK, we don't get... Uh, we've, we've had minor... Uh, I have never experienced an earthquake, OK? We've had a few very minor ones reported um, uh, now and again. I personally have never felt an earthquake. Uh, I lived through a very um, stormy night, s September 1987, I think it was. We had a big storm here which uprooted a load of trees and that sort of thing. So I have had that, but certainly no tornadoes. Although we've had the occasional tornado here. Uh, Marge, I don't know if you know your um, uh, hurricane, your tornado was reported here in the UK a lot on the news. And uh, uh, we had it on for, for a few days, actually. Uh, we're still getting it now, the people searching through, through rubble and things like that because they've lost everything. Yeah. Uh, you got, talking about your earthquake, I was in one. Oklahoma does have earthquakes. Right. You, you ought to be in one when you're in a camper. <laughs> oh, no. You're, you're bouncing on your wheels of your campers, bouncing up and down on the ground. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and the and the, earth, the earthquake, <laughs> and you're doing the the Harlem Shake, you know. <laughs> oh, we should do that one day on the show. We should it, make yeah. our own Harlem Shake. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, uh. We could do that. <laughs> I love it. I love it, and I love something like that because it's involved a lot of people. And you go on the YouTube, there's a lot of little groups of people now. Uh, you know, old people, kids, uh, everyone has made their own Harlem Shake video. It's great. Yeah. Well, they do. Uh, like I said, I was in this camper. I didn't know what was going on. Yeah. I knew the camper was shifting sideways, and then yeah, started. Yeah. I heard bounce. Of course, it's tied down. I've, I've got it anchored to the ground. Yeah, but that wouldn't. So I don't know how it was bouncing. <laughs> that wouldn't stop a tornado, would it? Though. No, but the earthquake wasn't even here. It was like uh, an hour and a half from me, a north of me. Away, but it yeah. shook that bad, yeah. you know. You're not but, on a fault yeah. line now, are you? Huh. You're not on a fault line there, are you? No, I don't think so. I really don't know. I don't know. Uh, we've got a lot of um, gyp rock and lime, and there's no telling what's here. So right. <laughs> I really don't know on that part. All right, but, Marge. Uh, well, I've got a couple of uh, emails to read out before I go today, so I'm going to okay. have to go there. Are uh, you feeling better now because you weren't well, were you? I have been having a heck of a time. I'm doing a little better. I've got to go back to the dentist. Like I said, I've got enough toothache medicine i've got roots coming oh you know like a, you know like you pull up a tree and you still have roots left over yeah yeah and, and that's what's in my mouth how are they going to get rid of those out. then huh how do they get rid of those they've got to cut your gum they gotta stick a little num number in there oh. and pull them out oh. there's some of them are sticking out some of them they'll have to dig for the roots you know they'll have to get out the shovel and oh <laughs> the word. drill and nah. I really don't know what's going to happen, but it's not going to be major. It's just leftover crap. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. hope and pray you never lose your teeth, hun, because this I hope is so not as well. fun. <laughs> it's not fun. The only thing is, you do benefit. I've got a beautiful smile when I put my dentures in. So. <laughs> well, you've, made, you've made someone smile. Terry up in Leeds here in the UK says he loves Marge. Oh, well, sweet. thank you. I'm glad somebody does. All right. <laughs> Talk to you next week, maybe, Marge. Thank you. Okay, have a great day, honey. Glad you're yeah. better. Bye-bye, my yeah. darling.
Good day. Poor Marge in Oklahoma got to have her uh, teeth sorted there. All awful. Okay, uh, some emails to do just before we go today, boys and girls. Uh, hello to Yannick. Hello, Yannick. Yannick's in Germany. And he wrote this uh, email in last week. He says, Hi, Chris. In one of your previous shows, you talked at length about your personal experiences at Starbucks. As far as I'm concerned, I've enjoyed every single coffee and cake in that place, and I really value the quality of their products. Let's face it, it's a bit posh, yet classy. Now, no. No, Yannick. If I thought it was posh and classy, I wouldn't mind paying that. I, I, I really wouldn't mind paying what they charge, £2.20 for a bit of cake. But it's not. Starbucks is not posh and classy. It's a bloody coffee shop. I will say, they make a damn good cup of tea. If you have the, the black tea in Starbucks, it's really nice. The secret is, I think, to buy a drink and not buy any food. That's where where the price of what you're, what, the money that you're spending at the time really goes up when you buy something to eat in there. It's shocking what they charge for a bit of cake, £2.20, no. He says, however, on one occasion, <clears throat> I simply couldn't resist the temptation. <gasps> oh, my God, do you really want me to read this out, Yannick? Yannick says, I simply couldn't av avoid the temptation of slipping one of those fancy Starbucks mugs into my bag as they charged 10 euros for one of them. Oh, you've got euros in Germany, that nasty little pretend money. We don't like the euros, dear. I mean, it just looks so cheap and tacky, euros, don't they? Sterling is the way to go, boys and girls. We've still got our pounds here. So what, what is it? Ten euros in Germany for a bloody Starbucks mug. Having finished my cup of coffee, I hastily glanced at the staff behind the counter to make sure I wouldn't get caught out. As soon as they were busy serving customers, I seized the moment to snatch my empty mug and dropped it into my rucksack. Mission accomplished. How do you know it didn't have one of those little things on there to set out of an alarm? Yes. I bet they, go, I bet they start doing that next. Put in a little, what are they called, security tags. They'll, they'll, they'll have them made into the cup somehow. <clears throat> so people like you can stop nicking their mugs. Mind you, with the price of a cup of tea and a piece of cake, you know, you'd think they'd give you the bloody mug, wouldn't you? He says, since that day, I've been the proud owner of a lovely white Starbucks mug. And let me tell you, my morning coffee tastes even better. Not least because I never paid a single cent for the mug. So who can blame me for this selfish act? It serves them right as they didn't exactly set a good example with their disgraceful tax evasion scandal. And that's some Yannick's. It is, it is disgraceful, Yannick. How that bloke could stand up there at the... Um... <laughs> How that bloke from Starbucks could stand up there and say to this English committee... <laughs> that they never made a profit. Bloody liars. In the last ten, they, they did. They had this committee here in the UK and they called in the Starbucks bloke. And he said, and I heard it, he said they hadn't made any money here for ten years. What a load of crap. That is shocking. Why did he actually expect them to believe that? You've got to pay your tax. How are we supposed to do things if people don't pay tax, like have roads and things like that? Don't be so bloody ridiculous. Everyone's got to pay tax. Um, Carl in New Zealand says uh, it's been, he's got to go now, I think. Uh, we've got 6,000 4.0 quakes. I know what that is. Of four on the Richter scale. Four quakes over the last two years. Plus, of course, half a dozen, so sort of six to eight initial quakes which started it all. The damage was only so bad because of a lot of our out-of-town buildings. A lot of our town buildings were still in the old Christchurch structure. 
Um, he wants to know, when's the next show? Uh, this show is live, OK? It's live every Friday at 10.30 in the morning uh, on the link. You can join, if, you, if you join my Facebook, uh, uh, Carl, you get a little note up there to tell you when it's on, if you miss it. My Facebook username is Chris Reardon UK. OK, all one word, C-H-R-I-S... R E A R D O N UK, Facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. I'm also on Twitter as well. Uh, same on there, Chris Reardon UK. So the, the live show is Fridays at 10 30 in the morning. Or, of course, if you miss it, you can always catch up on the recording. Main website for the show, if you want to watch or listen to any of the other shows, is United Kingdom Talk dot co dot UK. All right, United Kingdom Talk dot co dot UK. Uh, Carl says, um, uh, sounds like he's on the Starbucks payroll. He might be. We have them here and they're rubbish. Oh, don't you like... No, Starbucks, they do do a good cup of tea, but they take the piss with the price of the food. They absolutely do. He says, uh, legend, they have those chips in mugs already, so you can charge your coffee easily to a tab. <gasps> there you go, you see. You see, Yannick? They've already got the chips in there, reckons Carl. Oh, oh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> got to say hello to Oliver or Olivier, who says we were talking about cats and dogs the other week. And do you sleep with your pet? I sleep with my cat. And it says, I have to slip in between that cat and dog when we get into bed. We have a little doggy and cat dramas in the middle of the night. You are fab. I'm going to suss you out some more and watch the rest of your videos. Thanks from uh, Olivia. Thank you, Olivia. Nice to hear from you. And finally, one more email today. And then we're off. I can't believe I've sat here nearly an hour and three quarters today. By the way, I've got a new background. Did you notice the flag behind me, those of you watching the show? Is our wonderful Queen Elizabeth. You know I'm a great fan of the Royals and a Union Jack. So we've got a new, new, new little bit of a background. I like to like to keep it, keep it going. You know, keep it, keep it going. James says, "Hi, Chris. Ronnie should have his own talk show. He has some very good points. Oh, I don't. He'd get too serious. You see, I like to have a bit of a laugh." Post offices being moved into shops isn't always a good idea. We were talking about this last week. As they are poorly designed, like the ones in my local area, it's a sub-post office in WH Smith's. But it's upstairs and it's no good if the lift breaks down as there's only one lift up to the post office. Upstairs. Um, I don't know what's happened to WH Smith. It's just a complete and utter mess in there. Very difficult to find anything. Ronnie was also going on about fuel companies being accused of fuel price fixing. They want to take a look at the gas, electricity, water companies, as I think they're extortionately high, and it all needs sorting out and being bought up, but nothing is done. No, nothing will ever be done. We're always going to be ripped off for gas, electricity and water. Just learn that now. That's how it is. In fact, funnily enough, I got a letter on Wednesday this week from N Power by electricity provider to tell me that they've done their best. Oh, you want to see the beginning of the letter? I didn't bring it up here. They've done their best to keep the prices low, but they've now had to increase them for the following reasons. Have you seen their profits? I'll leave that one there. You talked about Nicky Friends, and it's a shame as the Eurovision Song Contest is not the same anymore. I haven't watched it properly for a few years now. I like the rock, sop from Nor rock song from Norway a few years ago. I used to like Eurovision when they had Katrina and the Waves. That's a few years ago now, isn't it, eh? Love shine, love shine a light and all that business. Um, Gina G he liked as well. The UK hasn't done so well in recent years. No, it hasn't. Ron has got good politics really down to a T. From what I saw, he looks like he's strong that UKIP. From what I saw, I thought it was strong that UKIP were racists and fruitcakes. But I just see them at the moment as grabbing headlines at the moment. I don't, I don't think they are racists. I don't. I don't think they're fruitcakes either. I think they want the best for the UK. I think... There's a difference between stopping more immigration and racism. I don't think stopping immigration is racism at all. You're trying to look after your own people, aren't you? Um, Terry says, no comment about the gas and electric. <laughs> all I'm going to say is investing in the future. Well, I've got the solar panels, haven't I? I had them done about four years ago. Brilliant. Brilliant. 
absolutely brilliant. My, le- my electricity bills are about £12 a month, worth every penny, but my gas bills are so high. Hope Katie, your cat is okay. They say pet hair can trigger asthma, but not always. As for going vegan, because of bad practices of killing for food, I think highlighting these bad practices will go a long way to help stopping the bad practices. You used to hear it a lot in the news, uh, with testing on animals for certain things, but don't hear about these protests anymore. It's bad to treat animals really badly, but it seems a big battle to stop it. It is a big battle. I mean, it really is. Um, glad. Uh, don't forget, have a little look at that film. Okay, that I discovered. You'll find it on the internet, www.earthlings.com. E A R T H L I N G S. Earthlings.com, okay? That's uh, the one I want you to look at there. Earthlings.com. Watch that film. It's about an hour and a half long. So, pretty long, that one. Um, but if you watch it, then. I think you'll enjoy that. It's it's a real eye-opener to a lot of things uh, that are done to animals. James also says, Glad to hear Fag Ashley was on the show again. She's been missed. And uh, that's from James. So thank you very much for that, James. Let me just see if we've got any more... Um, any more emails to, to do before we go today? And we're done. Oh, Carl. Carl has subscribed to YouTube. Thank you for subscribing, Carl. I do appreciate that. Yes, sir. I'm on YouTube as well. If you want to join us, uh, subscribe to my YouTube. My YouTube username is, again, all one word, Chris Reardon UK. Okay. YouTube username, Chris Reardon UK. That's it from the show today. Don't forget the email address. If you're watching the recording, any comments about anything we've been speaking about today, it would be great to hear from you. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. I'll be with you again live next Friday morning at 10.30 a.m., okay? Next Friday morning at 10.30 a.m. here on United Kingdom Talk. You have a good weekend. See you soon. Thanks for watching and listening. <laughs>